Today we're going to talk about the Monstera adansoniae. So Monstera adansoniae is a vining plant. So that means that you can either let it climb a pole or you can let it vine down. If you let, uh, let it climb um, up a pole or totem, the really big advantage is that the leaves are going to get bigger and bigger and the plant is uh, getting more mature. And also the stems uh, will become bigger. So uh, my ultimate goal with Monstera adansoniae is that I get really, really big leaves. As you can see, I have um, two specimen here. Um, this one is like a more narrow, wider form. It's called the Monstera adansoniae narrow. It's not a real scientific uh, name for it, but it looks distinctively uh, different. As you can see, the leaves are more elongated. The, um, the holes are narrower and they are um, closer to the midrib. Compared to the um, Monstera adansoniae wide form, as you can see here, it has quite wide leaves and grows a bit um, different. Uh, it has a very thick stem. It's quite difficult for you to see here. I'll just show you into the camera. Monstera adansonia is a plant from South America. Let's have a look about how to care for Monstera adansoniae. The most important thing um, for aroid plants and Monstera adansoniae belongs to the Araceae uh, family is that they have very well draining soil. So if you water the plant, the water should drain right through the potting soil and out of the pot. This is really, really important because otherwise you may face root rot. How you can do this is if you provide a um, airy and chunky soil uh, mixture. So in terms of potting, what you um, are looking for is a um, chunky aeroid mix. What works great is orchid bark. So orchid bark is really chunky. It will help um, to aerate and drain the pot and the potting soil better. In addition, you can use charcoal because forests are burning down and charcoal is in the soil. It also has like other properties and um, helps to uh, disinfect uh, the soil and uh, keep it nice, uh, nice smelling. In addition, you can use perlite and peat. So they're also like uh, chunky. They will help to aerate the soil. And also uh, what is great is peat moss because peat moss drains well. And in addition, it also retains and keeps some moisture because this is quite important for uh, Monstera adansoniae as well. They like slightly moist soil, but it should never be soggy. So um, that's it about um, the potting soil. Just as a reference, what I'm using is Lechutza Pon. So um, Lechutza Pon is uh, a mineral substrate and I think it's um, zeolite, things like that, volcanic stones and also some fertilizer and it works really really great with a um, self-watering pot so also this pot is a pot from Lechutza Pond. I'm not sponsored at all I just uh, want to tell you what I'm using it has a water reservoir um, you will see um, when you need to water it again once it's here on minimum um, as it is here so I would have to water it again and it then uh, keeps um, keeps the plant um, watered and, and moist for about three to four weeks and then I have to water again. Uh, so um, all my aeroids, Monstera and also philodendron plants really love these planters and also this potting mix. All right, let's talk about lighting. So um, this plant is growing in South America in the understory of tropical forests. So um, there will be almost no direct light these plants prefer bright indirect light. Um, in nature, they will be in shaded or semi-shaded spots sometimes. Uh, that works great because the um, outside light is so much stronger. And um, if you want to recreate uh, these conditions indoors, the best you can do is to provide um, bright indirect light. So indirect light is light that is not hitting uh, the leaves directly. Uh, so it's in a really bright spot. Um, an example are eastern and western facing windows that work great for these plants. Eastern uh, facing windows, this is where the sun goes up. So they will have a couple of hours of direct sunlight. This is totally fine for Monstera adansoniae, but just not multiple hours, like five, six hours or more of direct sunlight. 
at midday um, that would really hurt the leaves and can scorch the leaves quite a bit. So that's it about lighting. But in terms of lighting, what you can also do, of course, is to provide uh, artificial lighting. There's a lot of great LED uh, lights that you can use. What you need to look for is that the temperature is as close to natural sunlight as possible. So 5,400, 5,000 uh, Kelvin is actually great. You need to have a look at the wattage. So the higher the wattage, um, the more intense the light is going to be and also um, have a look at the distance. I use artificial lighting in uh, autumn and winter when there is not that strong of a light from outside. It helps the plants to not go into dormancy and, and still produce a couple of leaves and, and grow quite a bit. But it's not necessary. If you have great uh, windows, uh, window directions um, and you can put them close to the window, that's fine as well. Let's move on to humidity. So I said they're growing in South America, which is known to be quite humid. And this is how they would like it at home. Humidity is an important factor. I mean, you can get by with really low humidity, 40%, uh, something like that. Your plants, um, your monstera and sony I will survive, but um, certainly they will not thrive as much as they could. Because the higher the humidity, the better the air roots here are, uh, are growing are setting into the moss poles. The bigger the leaves are going to get, you really see um, a big growth spurt once you're able to provide higher humidity. How I'm doing it is I'm providing a humidifier. I let it run for a couple of hours a day in the morning and then I give the plants time to dry because what you don't want is constantly wet leaves because this is going to lead to rot. Uh, the leaves are going to rot off and your plants might eventually die. And also you need to ensure that there's sufficient airflow to, uh, to the leaves and to the whole plant so it can dry after it's been very humid. So I would recommend a humidity of 60% and more. I try to keep it as high as possible. So I'm aiming for 80, 90%. These conditions you can only reach in a, in a greenhouse or if you have them in a terrarium somehow enclosed and otherwise I think like 60% is already great. I would suggest to thrive for 60% humidity which is sufficient and also will allow for great growth. Moving on, watering. Watering is important, uh, of course, um, your plants need water. In terms of Monstera adansonii, I think they like quite a bit of water. I water them about once a week. I mean, this is really a general suggestion. It depends on the potting soil you have, on the pot size you're using, on so many different uh, factors such as light intensity, humidity, and also temperature. But I um, water Monstera adansonii about once a week in summer and also in spring. Summer and spring are the main growing seasons of Monstera adansonii and, and plants in general. So this is where they need a little bit more water than uh, in autumn and winter when they are uh, stalling and are not growing that vigorously. So in autumn and winter, I probably water them every two or three weeks. In my case, it's a bit special because I'm using self-watering pots. I have to refill them every three to four weeks and the plant is getting constant watering from the bottom up. What I would recommend if you're using an um, chunky aeroid soil. If you put your index finger in uh, up to one to two inches and uh, once you take it out if there's some soil sticking to the finger you know it's still humid and you should not uh, water your plants uh, because they don't like uh, soggy soil and Monstera dansonii will produce root rot which really quickly will turn into your uh, houseplant dying. That's certainly something you don't want. So that's it about watering. Let's move on to temperature, temperature range. So the ideal temperature for a monster at is 64 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit or in Celsius that's 18 to 27 degrees Celsius. That's nothing special. That's what you can provide in a general household. So there's not much you need to do in terms of temperature. Of course in winter you need to check if they are um, close to a window, if there's any drafts and, and things like that. That's certainly something Monstera Adansonii does not like and does not enjoy. 
so um, no special requirements in terms of temperature. If you would like to keep Monstera and Sonia outside, I think you should have at least 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees uh, Celsius um, at day or night time. It shouldn't go lower than that because that can harm your plant and they will grow slower and might eventually also die. Let's move on to fertilizing. In terms of fertilizer, you can either use a liquid fertilizer or a slow release fertilizer. So um, in these uh, Lechuza pond pots and, and substrate, there's slow release uh, fertilizer. I think it holds for three to four months and then you have to uh, replace it. I usually use liquid fertilizer for my house plants. I fertilize uh, Monstera and Sonia every two weeks in spring and summer. Uh, this is the, the growing phase of Monstera and Sonia and um, I'm using a balanced fertilizer. You can have a look at the NPK um, uh, indication, so either use 20-20-20 or 10-10-10 or even 5-5-5. I'm using that at half strength uh, because usually the indicated strength is not for uh, house plants and if they're in, a, in the pot um, it, the nutrients will be really concentrated and you usually need a lower application. You could also fertilize Monstera and Sonia each week but then you would not dilute it to half uh, strength, maybe one third or one fourth. It really depends on how strong the concentration is, uh, but fertilizer will certainly help the growth of Monstera and Sonii. Just make sure that you're fertilizing less in um, autumn and winter because your Monstera and Sonii will not grow that vigorously in these seasons. Yeah, in, in terms of growth, so let's talk about growth. I think this is a medium to fast um, growing houseplant. Monstera and Sonii, in my experience, can produce a leaf every one to two weeks in, in spring and summer, certainly. So it's a lot of fun to uh, watch Monstera and Sony I grow. What I really would encourage you is to use a moss pole. So only that way your Monstera and Sony I will eventually mature in a couple of years, three to four years maybe, and uh, will produce bigger and bigger leaves and also stronger stems. Well, um, the way I'm doing it is uh, I'm using real sphagnum moss and also I um, build my poles uh, myself. The big question here always is how do you uh, moisten uh, the sphagnum? Well, um, I actually do it like every every two to three weeks. Um, it really depends on your environment. It can dry out uh, much quicker. I just spray and uh, spritz the, the moss poles so they get a little bit of humidity and also I'm using fertilizer so uh, once the plants set the roots into the moss pole they will also um, get some nutrients and um, humidity. This is how I work with my moss poles but also you could uh, let the moss poles uh, completely dry. Anyhow your Monstera Adansonii will set the root, put their air roots into the, uh, the moss poles. There's also other moss poles called moss poles uh, which are not uh, moss. I think they're, they're coconut fiber, they're more dense and quite hard. They also work but probably not as well as uh, sphagnum moss so I really enjoy using sphagnum moss. I'm just showing you um, how it looks like. Um, you can help the plant um, set into the moss pole, like I attach them. I use either like a, a zip uh, lock or even some rope to just attach the plants until they attach themselves and sometimes they try to uh, grow in uh, other directions and I want to grow them upwards so I help them to grow into uh, the right direction. And yeah, I think this is really a must if you want to max out the growth potential of your uh, Monstera and Sonia. What you can also do is you can um, let them trail, as I mentioned in the beginning. This way the leaves will stay uh, rather small, but sometimes that looks really nice and you can certainly also do that. Let's move on to uh, propagation. So how do you propagate the Monstera and Sonia? Uh, you may ask. This is quite easy. I have to say. So I have Monstera and Sonia for a couple of years and propagated it many many times. So these are um, actually two propagations. What you will need is you need at least a node. You can see it here. This is a node. There is another node right here and there is a node uh, right here. So without a node, it um, doesn't matter what other people will tell you, a plant cannot um, be propagated. 
from a stem cutting. You can leave a leaf uh, on the on the plant and this will help the, uh, the cutting to develop much uh, quicker because it can do photosynthesis but you don't need it. You can just have like a piece of stem and a node and within a couple of weeks it will start to grow either roots first or a leaf or both at the same time it doesn't really matter usually it takes like three to four weeks for anything to develop it is recommended to do it in spring and summer uh, it will go much quicker but you can also do it in uh, autumn and winter it will also work it will just take much longer how i'm doing it is i first um, keep the cutting in water like just regular tap water you can use um, sterile water like reverse osmosis water or distilled water um, then you have like less chances of um, rot building but I think um, tap water is just working fine you should leave the cutting for a couple of hours if it's really thin and small like it's maybe half an hour I uh, just let it sit and callus over so it, it's gonna build like some sort of callus and um, this will help that it will not rot once you put it into the water. So I put it uh, into the water for a, for a week or two. And then once I see roots forming, I transfer the cutting into moist sphagnum moss. So um, sphagnum moss should, should never be soggy. You um, drench it in water and then you have to press it really hard. And then you know that it is not too moist because that's important. Otherwise you will also get rot. And then what I do is I put it in a plastic container. The plastic container is completely enclosed, like 100%, that's no problem. I open it up every day or every couple of days to um, allow for some air coming in and air exchange. And I'm also providing a heat mat underneath and I spray uh, inside uh, of the plastic container every couple of days. This way you will get almost 100% humidity. You have the warmth uh, from beneath that will help root growth. And um, it's absolutely the fastest way to um, propagate uh, a houseplant or um, a Monstera adansonii in that case. So this is how I um, propagate Monstera adansonii. You could also use perlite, you can use pure water, or if, um, if you want, you can just stick them into dirt. This will also work, but you have no indication. You won't see uh, once roots are forming. After a couple of weeks, you can like try to uh, pull it a little bit and if there's some resistance most likely it has built um, roots but I prefer sphagnum moss in general and I accelerate it by first putting in the cuttings into water. Yeah that's it about propagation. Let's talk about potting for a second. You need pot with drainage holes they need to drain really quickly. You can use plastic, terracotta, Ceramic, any kind of pot um, will work, that's no problem at all. You don't need to repot the plant really frequently. Every two to three years is uh, totally fine. Once they're either root or, or pot bound, I think they like it uh, like a little bit dense. Um, make sure that you use a small enough uh, pot. I think a big mistake is always to go for a really big pot. This way you will not see your Monstera and Sonii growing that much because um, it will start building roots if the pot is really big uh, until it's filling the or reaching most areas of the pot and also it becomes really really hard to water um, a plant in a too big uh, pot because the problem is you want to keep the soil a little bit moist but you would have to water so much to keep it moist but then still your Monstera and Sonii cannot reach the water because uh, most likely the, the roots are not long enough so just don't use a big pot. Use a rather small uh, pot and just increase it by an inch or two every time you're replacing the pot with a bigger pot. That's it about potting. Yeah, pests. Uh, let's talk about pests. I absolutely hate pests but they're part of nature and part of what we're doing here. I had all pests you can imagine and I think it's quite common to have uh, plant pests. Uh, you don't have to feel bad about it, it happens to everyone. I think the worst of the worst are the thrips. They are like black and, and thin and once they're mature, once they're small, they are uh, like white and almost translucent. They're very small and white uh, once they're immature and um, it's really really hard to get rid of them. Once you spot them on a, on a houseplant, once you spot them on your Monstera and Sonii, you have to um, quarantine the plant, you take it away from all the other plants, you spritz and spray it with water, you also uh, flush the soil and you do that every couple of days. Then what you can do is you can use neem oil, you spray and put neem oil on the leaves, you can also use uh, diluted alcohol 
all these kind of things. But as I said, it's very hard to get rid of thrips. Uh, what works for me is to use beneficial nematodes such as Ambicelius uh, Swirsky. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it um, correctly. I always uh, just call them Swirsky. So they're beneficial nematodes. Uh, and these are little insects um, that will go after the thrips and kill them. That's the only thing that is working for me. You can also have mealy bugs. So uh, mealy bugs uh, are white. They're quite easy to spot. You can either remove them with your finger or you can wash them off. You can use cotton swabs, dilute them in alcohol and get rid of mealy bugs. Scale as well, like you will scale most likely see on the underside of plants. They mostly are round and circle, brown or black. And they attach a little bit more to the leaves, but you can easily remove them with cotton swabs and diluted alcohol. It will kill them because um, they have some kind of armor over them and um, this will be diluted and destroyed by using alcohol. Yeah, let me show you like a quick close-up again uh, of uh, this is Monstera Adansonii white form and this is Monstera Adansonii narrow form. You see it's a little bit thinner, um, it has a very pointy tip and the, um, the holes are closer to the midrib. Also what you can see is that the stem is a little bit thinner than with uh, the Monstera Adansonii white form. Uh, you see it's a little bit thicker. And these are just like cuttings, they are not mature at all. And the cool thing with Monstera Adansonii is that they will get much, much bigger. They will get huge leaves, uh, which is really, really cool. They will be more and more perforated and get really, really nice uh, holes. So, Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the Monstera Adansoni Eye Care video. If you have any questions, please put them in the um, comments. And um, yeah, I'm myself really just a beginner. So if you have any um, other suggestions or things that were great uh, for you in terms of Monstera Adansoni Eye Care, please also put them in the uh, comment. And what I would really appreciate is if you could subscribe to our channel, if you could like the video, and also put in a comment because this is going to tell the YouTube algorithm that these videos are important and we're going to get better positioned, uh, which means um, it's easier for you to find the videos. Thank you so much for your support and see you again soon. Bye.